So another project that's going to help with uh, some future machining tasks is to make what's called a spider for the back. This is the back of the spindle on the lathe. Uh, the chuck's up here. And so this is hollow so I can fit longer pieces through the whole headstock of the lathe and machine just one end of them. Now a spider will basically be a tube that screws onto this conveniently threaded portion of the lathe and it will basically basically it'll be like a chuck for the back to keep what whatever is protruding out the spindle uh, centered and secure so it just takes some uh, this is some cold rolled tubing and it's pretty heavy wall it's quarter inch wall with a one inch center and we will thread it to fit on there and then we will drill and tap it for four screws that we will make out of brass. And this is a pretty straightforward project. It's something that uh, that will hopefully be of, of good use in the future. <laughs>
mostly to make it look professional and give it a better aesthetic. Using the tool in on the lathe, I'm actually making a, a little scribe line just in front of the chuck you can see. This will be part of locating the holes that I'm going to cross drill and thread for the bolts. So I'm taking a straight edge here and I'm lining it up with the same point on each jaw of the chuck to get my four perfectly square holes, or square to each other holes. I don't have, I couldn't think of a better way to to reference them on the part, and uh, so since they're already in a four-way fixture, it made sense to simply use that fixture. And there's my, my cross lines. operation I used a inexpensive center drill and this is a, a random hardware store number seven drill bit in preparation for a quarter inch by 20 thread and for this thread I actually chucked the tap up in the drill press because I wanted to keep it as straight as I possibly could but truthfully it was actually more of a pain than really worth it so for the other three holes I just used a tap handle and did it by hand and it, they, they came out more than more than straight enough with the body done, I can start working on the actual bolts. I'm gonna make these out of brass. This is half-inch brass hex stock. And for what it's worth, this video is not sped up at all. It only took about 40 seconds to cut this on the uh, bandsaw, which really isn't any any huge testament. I mean, it's it's easy to cut stuff. I'm using this hex stock, and half-inch is a little bit heavy for the head of a quarter-inch by 20 bolt, but I really wanted that weight of the, uh, the the bigger size and the brass. It'll help with momentum when keeping the spindle going, especially at lower speeds for certain operations. And making four bolts, you get into a little bit of a production mode here. This is bolt number two that I videoed working on. You can see the, the dust and chips from bolt number one. Obviously the first thing is to face off the end, and then we're going to turn down the threaded shaft, the the portion that will be threaded. And on this one, on the first two, I was a little gun shy in taking deep cuts. So I got a lot of vibration as I cut across that hex shape. Since it's not perfectly round, it's called an interrupted cut. The, each corner of the hexagon is, is kind of bashing into the tool. So there's that vibration there that was really not ideal. Uh, I finally started taking deeper cuts and on the first pass, uh, was able to basically cut right through those into a solid cut on bolts number three and four. For whatever that's worth. But we've got to go from a half inch diameter down to a quarter inch diameter, so this took a few cuts. I probably could have taken significantly deeper cuts, truthfully, uh, and only made it a, a small number of passes. I still had my lead screw and the gears that drive it set up for 1.5 millimeter thread pitch, so I, d I just hand-fed the, the carriage, which results in a little bit less nice of a finish, as you can see. Using the power feed would have been more ideal. Once that's done, I, I have a, a really cheap file that I basically just keep around for brass. It's uh, one of the $1.99 files from Harbor Freight. And I'm trying to chamfer the, the tip of the threaded portion so that the die will start on it. You can see that's my homemade die holder. You can actually watch me make that in another video. And it's just being held in the drill chuck on the tailstock. The tailstock's not fastened down to the bed of the lathe. It's, it's free moving at this point. And all I'm going to do is basically push it onto the brass to get it started. 
and then it'll drive itself, cutting those threads automatically. I've not done a lot of uh, thread cutting like, like this, just a little bit, maybe three or four times total, and this is... It's really cool. And then you can just back the tool off by reversing the lathe. Or back the die off, I should say. So it's exactly that easy, and as you can see, it cuts a thread that's more or less perfect. With the threads made, now all we need to do is part it off from the bar stock. Much like the turning operation, the parting operation, I, I have a lot of vibration as we, as we plunge into that hex shape. It's a little screechy. Uh, I probably should have used more, more lubricant. But brass parts very well. This was actually a, a, a nice, a nice, a nice parting operation. Sometimes they're not so nice. That's all. Oh yeah, and we're gonna clean up the top of the bolt as well. There's just that little tip that uh, from the parting process that you can take off with a file, grinder, sand, paper. I just put a couple of nuts in the in the lathe and screwed the, the bolt in to clean it up. And now you can finally see how it all comes together. This is obviously the back of the lathe. So that's just a piece of one inch or one half inch uh, drill rod, I believe. And I'm just kind of demonstrating how it can be adjusted exactly like a four jaw chuck. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get it perfectly concentric, uh, which bugs me. But I also didn't use an indicator uh, to to get it perfectly concentric. You'd put you'd put a dial indicator up there and adjust it just like this, like you would with four jaw, and you could perfectly center something and hold it very securely in the headstock of your lathe. So anyway, that's uh, that's this little project. If you liked it, hit like. Uh, feel free to comment. Subscribe to my channel for more videos from the shop. Anyway, see you next time.